The two big issues of any structural design are going to be the shape and the material. So when we talk about material, we're talking about steel, we're talking about concrete, we're talking about wood. Any of these different materials are going to have different aspects to them that will be more ductile, more strength, more brittle, more strong. Those are all different terms talking about sort of similar sets of issues. So we're very concerned about the specific material choice. Uh, is it robust enough? Is it helpful enough? Does it allow enough movement in a high wind or an earthquake uh, to not tear itself apart, but to uh, be able to withstand, uh, withstand that earthquake? Uh, so what are the issues that this particular project in this particular location needs in terms of that material choice? Plus, the material choice has a lot to do with financing, it has a lot to do with finishes, it's a whole bunch of other uh, aspects of fire ratings and things like that uh, that all tie in together. So the material choice becomes a huge uh, important question. Uh, the shape becomes an important question. So it sounds sort of weird when I say the word shape, but what we're really talking about there is the idea that we want the material to be in the most useful locations. So, for example, if we're talking about steel, you're probably talking about like a wide flange, right? That's that shape that you all know well. So there's our wide flange. What's going on there? Well, I've got a bunch of material up here and way down here. What that's doing is it's putting as much of the steel as possible exactly where I want it, and then it's just holding it apart from each other. So the web is just holding the chunk of steel that's up at the top as far apart from the chunk of steel that's down at the bottom as far apart from each other as it can. And then that way, when we have something that's spanning across, so we've got our steel beam spanning across, it's a very short steel beam, and it wants to sag. As it does that, I have a lot of compression in the top as things are sort of pushing inwards towards each other, and I have a lot of tension at the bottom where things are stretching out away from each other. And then I have this neutral axis in the middle where it's staying the same. So what I want is I want the steel at the top to deal with that compression and the steel at the bottom to deal with that tension, and I'm then just holding those apart and I'm hoping that that will keep it nice and square and stiff. So that's the whole point of a shape, is I'm just trying to push those parts apart in order to get as much depth as possible. So when we talk about shape, we're really talking about the depth, trying to push that material uh, as far apart as, as we reasonably can fit it. Uh, and then we're combining that with the question of material and how robust and how flexible that material is uh, and is it the right material for that particular use. So while I use the wide flange, the steel wide flange as the example, uh, we could look at any number of different materials and we would see the same kind of discussion. So I'll give you a quick example, something like a glue lamb beam. Let's say this was a glue lamb beam and it was made of lots of different layers, different laminations, glue lamb, and each of those laminations is a bit of wood, let's say two by sixes, all sort of trimmed down and glued together. If we actually looked at that in cross section, it would look something like this. And if we looked at the specifics of which species were where, we would find that the top few and the bottom few are going to be the best structural species, and then the ones in the middle are really going to be just filler species. They're just going to be spacers to hold those good species apart from each other. Now, for reasons of color mixing and kind of the look of the thing, they may choose to do it all out of the good material, uh, but they don't need to. They would find that in the same way that the wide flange wants to be heavy on the top and heavy on the bottom, uh, the glue lamb, the structural capacity, what I'm really trying to do 
trying to get a bunch of material up the top and a bunch of material down at the bottom, and it's going to go through that same set of issues in terms of the compression at the top and the tension down at the bottom, and I want the material where that's really happening the most, I want the best material to be fighting that particular set of issues. So when we talk about these design issues, when we talk about uh, kind of a structural systems, we're really talking about both the material and the shape and how they combine together. When we talk about material, we're talking about the modulus of elasticity. And the modulus of elasticity is just a mathematical way of understanding the robustness of that material. So it's all about the material itself. When we talk about the shape, we're talking about the moment of inertia and sometimes the radius of gyration, little r. Uh, those are useful ways of thinking about how to document the shape. So if I have a shape that uh, is where I have a lot of material at the very high end and very low end of the depth, that will have one type of eye, one type of moment of inertia. If I have one where it squeezes it all together and comes very uh, close and it's all very dense, well, that'll give me a totally different kind of inertia. And what we already know is the moment of inertia we want is the one that gives us a lot of depth. Uh, that's going to be stiffer and stronger kind of no matter what the material is. Uh, so the moment of inertia and the radius of gyration are ways to describe the shape. Once we know what the E is, the material is about, then we also know what the I is or what the R is. That allows us to start putting these pieces of information together and we can start to really understand what the capacity of the material is. Uh, so if I have steel, I have a very, very high E. It's a very high modulus of elasticity. Uh, and if I then also am using something like a wide flange, it has a pretty good eye uh, and because that shape is really designed specifically for the kinds of uses that we, are, we have. And so we're finding that we put those together and we get a very robust system. If I am doing the exact same thing but out of wood, well my E is going to be a much lower. It's not going to have the same robustness. It'll still be pretty good, but it's not going to be anywhere near as robust because the E is so much lower. So I took that wide flange steel and I crushed all that material down into one sort of say square section, something like that. So it's the same amount of steel and it's the same E because the steel is still has the same modulus of elasticity, but my eye would now be totally different. Well, that's not going to be anywhere near as effective a combination of shape and material. Uh, it's going to not work as well. It's going to have a lot less capacity to be a lot less robust. So both of these issues are really important. It's both the material and the shape. And we represent those through the modulus of elasticity, through the moment of inertia, through the radius of gyration, and a few other things which will show up along the way. Uh, but these are the sort of the main ones to kind of keep in your head because they're the fastest ones to really get at that set of issues. And we can't really think about structural systems without thinking of these particular issues. And like we said earlier, when we talk about uh, the idea of shape, we talk about how much span something has, we're also going to be very interested in the idea of bracing because that's where we're really saying this is not just a material out in the world by itself. We're now saying it's part of an overall system. And when we put it into an overall system, there's a lot more things going on than just a beam or just a column, uh, just the material and just the shape. We're now connecting it into the world of this particular building. And so bracing also becomes a key element of the discussion. But the main focus is really going to be the material and the shape, and then these secondary elements about how often it gets connected in, uh, and therefore what the span systems are, are like.